So this is going to be very exciting. How's it going guys and welcome back to another exciting video. If you don't know who I am, my name is Bennett Grazer, but in Swiss German they say Bennett Grazer. If you can pronounce that correctly, then you can officially speak Swiss German. Ganz geil, man! So if you're interested in gear reviews, storytelling and filmmaking tutorials, then you are at the right place. So consider subscribing. All right, so in today's video, we are going to discuss about the Sony a7 III. Is it still worth buying it in 2000? 20. Well, let's find out. For this video, I've invited a special guest whose name is known as Little Boy. And the crazy thing about him is that he's not only an awesome dancer and filmmaker that shares the same passion like me, he is currently held on an isolated onboard cruise ship that is floating around the Atlantic Ocean. I actually saw his short film, 18 Days and Counting. If you haven't seen it, I will leave a link in the video description below. Beautiful video, I comment on it, and he immediately reached out to me and wanted to do a collab. So little boy, introduce yourself, please. Hi everyone, my name is Little Boy. First of all, I just would like to say thank you for Bennett Grazer for letting me be a part of this video today. Thanks for the collab. I'm very excited to share with you a little bit of my experience with this camera and let's jump into the first question. What is it? As you know, the Sony a7 III is a very popular camera nowadays and the first question I have for you is what are your reasons for buying that camera? My reasons to buy this camera was the ability to shoot 4K. I never had the opportunity to shoot in 4K and I was looking for a camera that would give me the possibility and the ability to shoot in low light because it's very nice. I got to use the ISO very high. I don't need too much light. I think that was the main reason that I went for this camera. What are your reasons? Well, I actually own two Sony a7 III cameras, one functioning as a A-roll and the other as a B-roll camera. There are a couple of reasons why I chose to buy the a7 III. Let's first talk about the price. At around $2,000, you get a featured pack camera. It can shoot 4K 24 frames per second, which I use to get that filmic look and 1080p at 120 frames per second for slow motion. I can use the custom dials to switch between presets. So if I want to shoot in 4K, I can quickly switch to dial one and for slow motion to dial two. You also have the option to shoot in log, which gives you a more dynamic range in your image and therefore gives you a better image quality. Uh, not to mention the great low light capabilities and five axis in body stabilization, which gives me smoother handheld shots. Now, my favorite features are the crop mode and autofocus. Switching to crop mode uh, changes the sensor size to an APS-C sensor, allowing me to get 1.5 times closer to the subject. Combining it with the clear image zoom and voila, you have three times as much zoom with no loss of quality when shooting in 4K. This way, I don't need to have lenses that cover all of the focal lengths and will save me money in the long run. Now for the autofocus, I love the different focus areas options. I use the flexible spot to set a specific focus point. And the great thing about it is that I can use the touch screen for it. The autofocus is blazing fast, accurate, and almost competes with the Canon dual pixel autofocus. I rely on it a lot and find this very important for shooting videos. So back to you, little boy, after using your camera for this long, what do you think are the pros and cons of the a7 III? The pros is because I have everything that I need. I can take nice photos from my social media. I can give a nice quality video for my clients. I can do slow motion 120. I can do 4K. I feel like this camera is very diverse and I can achieve a very high quality product with just a little bit of work or just a little bit of editing in post-production. So I'm very happy and the only cons about this camera is it's not very like a thing that I need very much but the flip up screen would be nice and just so I can see like moments like this I'm recording from my external monitor which is fine but it would be just handy to just flip up screen and the time record the time recording this camera I wish there was longer than 30 minutes because every time that we record we need to keep looking the rack time 
other than that I think I'm very happy and you just gotta have to get used to it to these little things but overall it's very nice what about you Another downside is that the Sony a7 III records internally 8-bit 4K. I wished it could output 10-bit because when shooting in a flat picture profile, I get more color information to start with. 8-bit just has less room to color grade and becomes visible if you push it to its extent. Yes, you could use the Atmos Ninja 5 that features 10-bit codec, but as what I've seen, the a7 III still outputs 8-bit and the difference isn't really noticeable. Don't get me wrong, the 4K 8-bit video quality of the a7 III is very beautiful and I'm still very impressed with it. It's not really a big deal for me, it's just nice to have. As for my last con, it would be perfect if the Sony a7 III could shoot 4K in 60 frames per second. 4K is really great for having more detail in your image giving you an overall better image quality and having additional 60 frames would be great just to also have this quality in slow motion. Moving on to the pros. As I have mentioned previously in the reasons for choosing this camera, you really get a lot of value for its price. One thing that I didn't mention is the improved battery stamina, which for me is a huge plus. One battery lasts me for more than half a day. So to conclude this video, I wanna know from you, little boy, do you think that it's worth buying the Sony a7 III in 2020? If you like the Sony color, if you like a full frame camera, if you like 4K, 120 frames per second, do slots, you can specifically change and adapt the modes so you can save photo and video and switch real quick. This camera is very easy and very handy because of this option as well. If you'd like to increase a little bit the ability to edit, to color grade, to learn new things, I think this camera is gonna challenge you a lot and it's gonna give the ability to produce a nice quality product. It's your money, it's your choice, but for my personal experience, this camera is very good. I would recommend and I think it was one of the best investments other than my computer that I've ever done because this camera is the camera that I have done all this work for the past two years and I got to make a lot of money out of my camera. So for me, it's worth it. What do you think? I would say in the end of the day, the Sony a7 III is not the perfect camera, but for what I use it for and how I like to shoot, the Sony a7 III fulfills my needs as a filmmaker. I also have been a Canon user in the past and I still love Canon for their colors and excellent build quality, but after shooting with the Sony a7 III, it's hard to get back. Though with the new announcement of the powerhouse Canon EOS R5 full frame mirrorless camera that can shoot 8K 30 frames per second and 4K 120 frames per second with raw 10 bit, this might be the perfect camera, man. In the end, what really matters is not the camera, but the person behind it. Thank you so much, little boy, for your thoughts on the Sony a7 III and reaching out to me. It was really a pleasure working with you, man. I really hope that you and the other members on the ship will be able to go back home soon. It definitely is a challenge for you guys. I wish you all the best and stay safe. If you haven't checked out Little Boy's channel, he is a really cool dude that does lots of awesome filmmaking tutorials. Definitely also check out his short film. I will leave a link to his channel in the video description below. Thank you so much guys for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to comment on this video. Uh, take care and see you in the next video.